every existence multiplied by possibility and spread out in infinite measure. Now there is a malevolent force at work, one driven by a singular goal, the destruction of all there is. There's a wave of antimatter sweeping across this universe, destroying everything in its path. I brought you all to Earth-38 because this is where the Monitor wants you to make your stand. Right, so we are going to need a bigger team. You want some help? The entire universe needs you. Across space and time exist seven heroes who can save the multiverse. I'll find them. You are Clark Kent, right? Bruce? Kate. to stop this antimatter wave. All right, then flash. Oliver, it's time. Has the planet been evacuated yet? Not entirely. Then it's not time. One thing is certain. Everything we know, everything there is, and everything there ever was, is doomed. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. We have a brand new Crisis on Infinite Earths trailer. It's supposed to be the final really big trailer, but there'll probably be a couple more promos. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs. We got a whole bunch more footage of Tom Welling's Smallville Superman, implying that he's going to be one of the Paragons. All the crossover episodes will start airing next Sunday, so if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get everything. Of course, I'll do Easter egg videos for all the episodes. Careful for spoilers for things that have happened on the other shows so far because I'll be talking about that stuff, but the big deal here is the Monitor finally explaining the multiverse in Crisis on Infinite Earths to all the people. Previously, he'd just been assembling heroes and pushing them around like chess pieces on a board. He never mentions the Anti-Monitor by name, he just refers to him as this malevolent force behind the antimatter wave that's going to destroy everything. Like Tom Cavanaugh's Pariah Wells at the end of the trailer says, One thing's for certain, we're all doomed. They literally destroy Supergirl's Earth because a lot of this is all taking place on her Earth, so that might be one of the big cliffhanger moments. As the trailer footage plays out, it looks like the next big world on the chopping block is this version of Argo City where Kara's mother, played by Erica Durant, was. That was also where this version of Superman and his Lois Lane went for the birth of Superboy John Kent that we saw in the last trailer. Good thing they came back to Earth-38 just in time. But because of the way they cut this trailer, it's kind of hard to figure out where all these scenes are happening in the first three episodes. Because of some of the characters that show up, I know some of this footage is from the third episode. It's not all from the first episode. But the reason why Lila Harbinger is probably telling them that the Monitor wants them to make their stand on Earth-38, Supergirl's Earth, is because Supergirl is the first episode of the crossover this Sunday. As you see during the trailer though, things do not go too well for them, they're completely doomed, so it sounds like whatever it is that they're trying to do, it's not successful. Oliver talking about getting a few more people for their team is probably something from the first episode though, because then you see Barry show up in a completely different scene. Do you guys need some help? There's a bunch of footage of Earth-90 Barry Allen, John Wesley's ship in the other trailer. He only shows up at the end of this trailer too, so there's a lot of people that aren't in this trailer that will show up during the first couple of episodes. This footage of Oliver asking Earth-38 Superman for his help seems kind of weird where they put it in the trailer because most versions of Superman would be the first persons to lead the charge. Normally it would be Superman going around collecting all these heroes. They're on the Wave Rider, so maybe this is them taking the Wave Rider to Argo City before it gets destroyed to pick him up. Like, hey, this is big crisis coming that you don't know about because you've been on vacation with your wife who just gave birth to your new son. The Monitor explains the Seven Paragons. There was a scene during The Flash that kind of teased that too with Pariah Wells that I'll talk about in a second. But as far as I know, the Paragons are supposed to be Oliver, The Flash, Earth-38 Superman, Tom Wellings, Smallville Superman, as this footage implies, Kingdom Come Superman, who doesn't really show up that much during this trailer, Martian Manhunter, and Kevin Conroy's Batman. But there's a difference between being one of the main characters of the Arrowverse shows and being a Paragon. So not all the mains are supposed to be Paragons, if there's only going to be seven Paragons, and the way they cut this trailer implies that a bunch of non-main characters will also be Paragons. Like it's implied that Earth-38 Lex Luthor is also one of the Paragons, big twist that one of the big villains is also supposed to be one of the big heroes of Crisis because he's such a genius and he can help them out. Love the footage of Superman and Iris going to get Smallville Superman, who just seems completely chagrined to see them, like, what? What is going on here? 
If you never read Smallville Season 11, the comic book tells the story of what happens to him after the Smallville series finale. When he fully becomes Superman and he puts the suit on, there's a version of Justice League on this earth, there's a version of Batman, Wonder Woman, most of the other big Superman-specific comic book characters and Justice League characters. He has all these adventures with them. We're not quite 10 years out from the Smallville series finale, but Mark Guggenheim, the showrunner on Arrow and one of the executive producers and managers sort of this big crossover endeavor, said that they would be treating the Smallville season 11 comic like canon for the purposes of the crossover. So when they show up on this earth, that's why Smallville Superman looks like he's none the worse for wear. Got a whole lot of city miles on that version of Superman. One of the other most interesting things that they do in this trailer is canonize Kevin Conroy's Kingdom Come looking Batman as the Batman of Earth 1, at least that's what they're implying based on this interaction. Because he instantly recognizes Batwoman as if it's his version of Kate Kane, his niece that he's known this whole time. I'm totally cool with them doing this, meaning that Kevin Conroy has been the Batman of Earth 1 this entire time, we just haven't known it till now. The alternative would have been to have him come from another Earth. My biggest question for him now is how are they going to treat all the Batman the Animated Series and Batman Beyond Easter eggs since that's where most people know Kevin Conroy from. And typically what they've done with big actors like this from other DC properties is they try to include Easter eggs from the places that they came from. But because this is a live action now, it's getting really meta. You just have to pretend like what if Batman the Animated Series had been a live action show? That would be one of the best DC shows of all time because Batman the Animated Series is not just one of the best animated series of all time, it is one of the best TV shows of all time just by itself. We finally see all those shadow demons that they teased in Nora's future newspaper during the Flash season 5. Obviously these are all CG creations which is why they didn't include them in the previous trailers because they're still working on all the visual effects. Reverse Flash was supposed to be leading this army. So maybe he shows up right before this big battle happens in whichever episode that winds up being. The reason we probably haven't seen him is because they've been spending most of their time in these trailers focusing on the pariah version of Wells and Tom Cavanaugh is playing all these different characters. If you look in this big fight scene, there's all these pillars and pylons with advanced looking technology bursting through the floorboards in this regular looking lobby. So this probably has something to do with the monitor's cosmic tuning forks, the big towers that they construct during comic book Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's just part of his plan to try and stop the antimatter wave. But as we see, it looks like it's completely unsuccessful. Also notice that Ray Palmer is in most of the early footage on Earth 38 and Kingdom Come Superman Brandon Routh is in all the later footage. So unless this blue energy that just winks him out is portaling him somewhere else, early RIP to Ray Palmer. This shot of Superman and Supergirl against the red sky is also interesting because they're using their powers and you'd think that the yellow sun being blotted out by the red antimatter wave would dampen them in some way. The whole reason why you would want to turn the sky red would be to neutralize them. Barry gets really curious about some weird looking cosmic energy that we haven't seen before. This is Sarah in what looks like Lois Lane in the white jacket in the future Team Arrow bunker where everything is run down. Then Flash recruits Black Lightning on the Wave Rider. That's not happening till episode 3. He might show up at the tail end of episode 2 in a tag scene or something like that. Then everybody press F in the chat for Earth 38. The Monitor did tease that he can bring Earths back that have been wiped, but it would be cool if they use Crisis, Earths will live, Earths will die, and the universe will never be the same to merge Supergirl's show with the Earth-1 characters. That way all the heroes can be on Earth-1. We already have our Earth-1 Batman now canonized as Kevin Conroy, so you basically have all your big Justice League characters minus a Wonder Woman, although I do believe they've been trying to get Linda Carter in a cameo, so that may have happened because they finished filming the crossover a while ago. So for those of you asking about that tag scene where he became pariah from the comics, it just confirms some of the theories that we had earlier this season. It just made sense based on his mission of trying to attain this knowledge and take down the monitor that he would be turned into comic book pariah. The whole idea here is that he gained access to the secret sanctum. These seven symbols correlate to the seven different paragons, although it's not clear which symbol correlates to which paragon. But when the voice of the monitor grants him access and you see the door open and he's bathed in this light that just blots him out, that's him attaining this cosmic knowledge. My next video will be for the mid-season finale of The Flash. They'll be teeing up Crisis and wrapping up their negative Flash arc. But while you wait for everything, click here for that brand new Black Widow trailer and click here for the other big Crisis on Infinite Earths trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.